So all you need for this workshop is yourself, an open curious mind, tissues or a handkerchief, a candle or a small fire, wood matches or, or thin dry sticks, something safe to burn the stick inside, something to write with and on. That's better. And it's always good to have a drink too. So there is a lot to take in today. Please feel free to make notes as you go. Ask the uh, any questions in the chat box. Remember, there are no silly questions. And I thank you for taking part. So here we're going into our finding our flow week eight. And... I decided to call this stepping out of our BS part two because we really need to, to be able to find our flow. We have to step out of our belief systems. We have to step out of the stories that we've been told. We have to step away from the conditioning and move forward into a life where we're consciously creating our future, where we're not being run on the stories or from the stories of our past. So we're going to look at stress and helping you understand stress is where we're going to start. So we all experience stress uh, in our lives and it's impossible to, to cut stress out. But what we can do is get a better understanding of what stress actually is and how it affects us. And only then can we learn how to manage it in a safe and healthy way, which over time raises our resilience. And that's what the course has been about. It's been teaching you to raise your resilience, becoming way more resistant to any anything that life throws at you. And, you know, when things show up, you're able to just take yourself back to centre and you've learned many tools which will help you overcome what shows up in your life, not just throughout the course. Now this is tools for life, so it'll be with you for as long as you choose to practice them. Now, stress is the result of feeling under pressure from both internal and external sources. Our self-expectations and conscious fears can create internal pressure from our environment, our home life, our work life, our responsibilities and the people who we come into contact with. They also create external pressures. The pressure to take responsibility, perform and or meet someone's needs in a certain way can be genuine. Or it can be a perception of what we believe to be true. Either way, once an issue comes up, we can feel it's our duty to meet these expectations. Sometimes it is not possible to meet the requirements in the allotted time. Or we do not have the financial, mental or physical capabilities to achieve what is required. We feel fear from the possible repercussions because we cannot achieve what is expected. This then raises the pressure and heightens the levels of stress. When this happens, our bodies respond to the feeling of fear. A cocktail of chemicals are released, including uh, adrenaline, no, um, I can never say this. Nor if uh, I give up. Uh, and cortisol, you can see how it's spelt and look it up. <laughs> so if we don't calm the feeling of fear down, cortisol continues to enter our system and it compromises the immune system, raises the heart rate and increases blood pressure. Long-term effects from this can cause disease such as adrenal fatigue and memory loss. So there's three components of stress. So 
the first one is your stressor or event so it's how you perceive and experience the event that you're you're naming stressful or feeling stressful and then you have the processing apparatus which is us it's our unconscious interpretation belief systems internal emotional dynamics what runs the show and keeps us reconnecting with ourselves because we believe we need the behavior so we will be loved accepted respected and of course we don't want to lose attachments with others or put them at risk and the third uh, <coughs> is the stress response so it's the physiological response, which is how our body's responding to the actual event. This is why it's so important to raise our awareness or self-awareness using loving awareness, because by making the unconscious conscious, we're able to improve our health and well-being and our autonomy and reclaim uh, our truth by turning inwards with curiosity. It's time to change our stories. It's time to consciously create change, to drop the BS, the belief <laughs> bullshit, and begin to choose authenticity over attachment. Because the hardest way to be, <coughs> excuse me, the most challenging way to live is being something that is not you. So reconnecting to your inner GPS, you can flow with your core values, drop what's no longer serving your highest good and take responsibility for your thoughts and change your life. So when we reconnect to our inner GPS, so our intuition, we can flow with core values. So what's really true for us. And we can let go of what doesn't serve our highest good, which is usually other people and places and things, and take responsibility for our own actions, thoughts, actions and behaviours, completely changing our life around. So how is stress showing up in your life? Is stress affecting your life right now? It does me. <laughs> um, and I, I want you to think about where your head is at right now. Not your physical head, but your mind. Like what are your current beliefs in your life right now and in this moment? And now I want you to think about which statement resonates with you right now. So statement one is, I feel like life happens to me and I have no control over what happens and I am a victim of a predestined fate. Two, feeling like life happens for you. I feel that my happiness is my choice and I like to explore how I feel. I look into taking positive steps to changing what no longer suits me in my life. Three. Life happens through me. I am in control of my life and I take full conscious responsibility for all what happens to me and how I interact with others. I see obstacles as an opportunity to learn and grow. Or four, life happens as me. Life is happening to everyone and is a reflection of what a person puts out there. I love to serve others and contribute to my life by sharing my energies with all for the highest good. So I'm going to read all four statements again. So feeling into which statement resonates with you now. One, I feel like life happens to me and I have no control over what happens and I am a victim of a predestined fate. Two, feeling like 
life happens for you. I feel that happiness is my choice and I like to explore how I feel. I look into taking positive steps to changing what no longer suits me in my life. Three, life happens through me. I am in control in my life and I take full conscious responsibility for all what happens to me and how I interact with others. I see obstacles as an opportunity to learn and grow. Four, life happens as me. Life is happening to everyone and is a reflection of what a person puts out there. I love to serve others and contribute to life by sharing my energies with all for the highest good. If you resonate with the first statement, it's likely that stress impacts you deeply and has taken over your mind and body to such a great extent that you are struggling to getting through each day. You feel trapped by stress, barely able to cope. Suicidal thoughts can come often and you don't feel that it's possible to get out of the mindset. Second statement is what resonates with the majority of people. If this is how you feel too, then stress has quite a negative impact on your life and you wish to change that, but are not sure if or how that is possible. You may get in frequent suicidal thoughts on your worst days. Despite this, you are open to new possibilities and look for and at self-help techniques. You look to others for help with healing yourself. When life happens through you, you resonate with the third statement and stress has a positive impact. You ask life, what lesson did you bring with this new obstacle? <coughs> and you learn and grow from what each learning opportunity brings. You also choose to share with others what you have learned. Many people who are learning practitioners and helping practitioners, sorry, like therapists, resonate with this third statement. They learn how to manifest what they want in their health, wealth and happiness. They understand they have the power to consciously create a positive change and maintain that. The fourth statement is rarely attained by some of the time. And it is even rarer to stay in this mindset all of the time. People in this mindset learn and grow with all life throws at them with ease. They also live their lives dedicated to improving the lives of others from a neutral standpoint in a positive way. They help because they want to help and they do not do it for any other reason than to help. They have a very open mindset and never judge circumstances. They understand life is how life is and that its nature is not to force, but to allow growth in its own time. Once you attain this level, you are able to be the creator of your own health, wealth and happiness and help others create their lives too. If life is happening to me, so when we live in the to me mindset, we are very likely to be so enveloped in our victim mindset that we choose to give away all our power and energy to the problem. We do not think clearly or positively and can have many mental and physical sickness and disease as a result of this cruel, torturous mindset. It manifests itself as anxiety and depression. It creates negative mind chatter and constantly brings up negative thoughts and feelings from our past. When positive opportunities come along, we often miss out because we suffer from mind fog and don't think clearly. It's often that we don't sleep very well and are functioning on very little sleep, often repeating and replaying our stories in our own minds and telling our tales to others. We look for the sympathy and are desperate for someone to rescue us and don't take steps to rescue ourselves. 
When people have suggested ways of fixing our problems, we find excuses why they cannot work and will not work. We blame our past experiences for the life we are subjecting ourselves to today. We blame parents, schools, religions for screwing us up long term. We blame people at work and in our home lives for screwing up our current lives and blame pretty much everyone and everything for screwing up our future. We don't take responsibility for ourselves. We neglect ourselves and prefer to live in a world detached from reality. Often spending our days playing our computer games, scrolling endlessly through Facebook or refusing to get out of bed. Our negative thought patterns keep us trapped by internal voices telling us we are not worth it. The voices can be our own or the voices of those who have bullied us in some way throughout our lives. They stop us believing in ourselves and realising we are worth it and do deserve a life with happiness and love. Negative thoughts can keep us trapped in environments and in relationships that do not serve us. By remaining in excuse me, remaining in a negative environment where we don't feel happy, it makes us feel more trapped. We feel like we don't deserve anything better and end up stuck, wasting our lives in jobs which don't allow development and with people who stunt our mental growth. To cope with this, we often smoke, take drugs and eat unhealthy food. We have unhealthy addictions which create chemical reactions which stimulate what states of pleasure should feel like. Trying to get extra likes on social media, trying to relax through unhealthy methods like watching hours of television. While we live in a state of mental dis-ease, our body creates more stress hormones which make us feel even worse. Our bodies create chemicals all the time, which can over time present themselves in our bodies um, as anxiety and panic attacks, IBS, indigestion, heart flutters, headaches, to name a few. Stress is also proven to weaken our immune system, which makes us more susceptible to virus and illness. The only way that anyone in this mindset can ever change is by realising their life is not down to anything other than their perception. By stepping into asking questions about how they feel and opening up to the possibility of a new life free from the current ways, they're making conscious decision to choose change. They can finally free themselves from their own entrapment. So when life happens for me, we realise we are unhappy and something needs to change and we start looking. This looking and searching for happiness can be an amazing journey. We open ourselves up to the possibility of a better way of life and a new way of thinking. By thinking positively, we can start to take care of ourselves. With each new step, we start to grow. Our health and wellness improves, our quality of sleep improves, our interactions with others improve too. We feel for others and we know that if we can improve our own lives in some way, that we may help another. <coughs> we often end up trying to rescue others and struggle setting and maintaining healthy boundaries with people who want to abuse our mind nature, our kind nature. Only when we realise that a person has to take responsibility for themselves can we let go and stop wasting our time and energy trying to help them. By beginning to take responsibility for ourselves and understand what we are actually responsible for, can we start to prioritise what really matters? We can then learn to stop taking on the responsibility of others. And then as we learn to respect ourselves more, that we start to alter how we allow others to treat us. 
changing our environment and the proportion um our environment to better suit our needs establishing new healthy boundaries at home and at work so we don't take get taken advantage of looking at different self-help techniques teaches us about the benefits of positive language and self-love we learn how to raise our energy levels through going to the gym, taking walks, receiving energy healing like Reiki. We look to others for guidance from others through religion and spirituality. We look for others to provide us the answers to our questions through divination and religious and spiritual practices. Realising that we have the power to consciously create change for ourselves can be life-changing it takes us away from a place of stagnation into a place of hope we begin to understand our bodies and mind are connected in some way and begin to take care of our body and mind by doing so we uplift our spirits starting to pay attention to our body's needs helps us feel healthier. The body produces many feel-good chemicals from exercise. Even a good cleaning session at home or work raises our heart rate enough to make a positive experience, uh, make a positive difference. <laughs> Nurturing our minds helps our brains stay healthy. Our brains start to wire in new positive habits the way we talk to ourselves changes. We have more positive, inspiring thoughts and begin using more powerful <laughs> affirmations that remind us that we're worth it and deserve so much more. As we take each small step to conquering our issues, we become so much wiser. In our bodies, the chemical reactions change and we create more pleasure hormones like oxytocin. We create a whole lot less stress-related hormones and our bodies feel less tense and our minds more at ease. We feel so much happier and healthier. Most people are quite content to remain in this comfortable zone of existence. Stress can still knock them a bit, but they can function really well. They know happiness and contentment and that is enough for them. So they remain in this mindset, always maintaining where they are and knowing they are no longer a victim of circumstance. Life happening through me. When we recognise that we have full control of what happens in our lives, we take full responsibility for all circumstances as they happen. Acknowledging that the body and mind are connected and one cannot be altered without affecting the other awakens us to learning how to gain balance in all areas of our lives. We are no longer visiting our past and see our past as shadows which we can choose to visit should we choose to. Knowing that we create our present helps us be more mindful in what we do in thought, words and actions. Our work, lived, uh, our work lives have to start to come into balance with core values. We find work can serve our needs better by altering hours, days and how we take holidays. We make work work for us and in alignment with what serves our greater good. Our interactions with others are more conscious and compassionate. We do not react as much to other people's negativity. We select our friends and environment wisely, reducing the drama and gossip dramatically. We use our time and energy in ways that enrich us. We vibe with our tribe and no longer attract those who bring us down energetically. We can begin through consciously creating our language so it serves our greater good. We know our thoughts become our language and watch each word rippling out into the world and affecting all that it touches. We look at ourselves from a place of love and compassion, accepting the past as past. Our present is the most important focus and our futures can be 
designed and built to serve us and our passions. Our bodies become our best friends, our loyal consorts. We are mindful what we put into them and what we put them through. Knowing that is it's in our in knowing that it's in our best interest to listen to our best friend. Realising our aches and pains are our way of the body saying, hey, too much, slow down and rest a while. <laughs> Believing in our own power, we stepped up to a healthier and happier self. We hold less resentment and judge a whole lot less too. We can choose to now share what we know to other, with others or keep it to ourselves remaining confident in our own abilities to cope with all that we receive. Some people become helping practitioners and help others break free from limiting beliefs and leave their past lives behind them. They often specialise in their chosen fields and are dedicated to the greater good of all. Stress can knock a person with this mindset, but it doesn't happen often. And the consequences of any knock are short-lived as the person will use the circumstances to learn and grow. They understand they're always looking for the root of the problem. You can solve so much more than the issue which presented itself. The body's chemical stress reactions are triggered a lot less. The pleasure hormones are maintained, which allow the person to feel calm, healthy and content, even when things don't go as expected. People with this mindset can always see positives in situations. They have the ability to make all situations work for them and create a balanced life which serves them in mind, body and spirit. These people are truly grateful each day and value the little things in life, like the beauty of a smile, the sharing of time and true friendships. <coughs> so life as me. This is the stage where ego no longer matters. The body and mind are working directly with spirit and the person is walking, talking, inspiration to others. Some people call this enlightenment. The person who lives in this mindset is a rare beauty. They are loving and kind. They do not judge others and live in equanimity with all. These people see that we are all the same and all connected through our highest consciousness. They live in service to others and come from a place of true loving awareness. Life is no longer a chore and through mindfulness can find and experience even the most mundane of tasks, utilising all their senses from a place of peace, joy and happiness. To them, money is energy and wealth is a way of helping others. They treat others like a normal person would treat an incredibly important, well-respected person. They understand that God or the higher consciousness is in each and every being in existence. When they serve another soul, they see right through the role or the roles to the truth of the soul who is hiding behind it. They do not see people's titles or disabilities. They only see a person's limitless abilities and power because they know the truth. Yet they do not treat the person with any judgment because they acknowledge that we are all in our journey. We are all here in this life to walk each other home. Always calm and happy, but never overbearing. They're floating through life, experiencing all emotions from a place of true compassion. Knowing the highs and lows are all part of life and the natural way of things. Nurturing and guiding others through their loving kindness. Seeing birth and death as equal and vital parts of life which pass like the seasons appreciating each experience as an honour and living in pure gratitude for all in their journey of life. If you're taking part and taking part in this course, the chances are that you're in either the second or third mindset. 
in which case you're looking to develop the understanding of science to find safe, healthy and enjoyable ways of managing stress when it occurs. We need to look at the mind-body connection and understand that everything that happens in your body originated as a thought and every thought that you have affects your body in some way. In this course, you've experienced a few successful mindful practices that science backs up. Mindfulness can be attained pretty much anywhere and in any situation. One of the most effective ways of stress management is to learn how to be mindful. It originates from ancient India and has been integrated into modern day life through many different methods. Mindfulness helps by bringing thoughts back into experiencing the present moment. This technique stops your thoughts on their track in their tracks <coughs> and focuses on whatever is happening in that moment. As we in to gray each of our senses into the present moment we start to find pleasure through our senses and welcome back the calm this allows us to relax and rebalance reset in our parasympathetic nervous system mbct is mindfulness mixed with cognitive behavioral training and it helps you to identify stresses and guide you through how you manage them using a simple selection process that allows you to turn your thoughts around and let your thoughts go when they no longer serve you. MBCT has been an underlying part of this course. I'm going to talk now about the four common disconnects. Stress is activated when we experience a change that disconnects us mentally and physically from ourselves. When we're cut off from nature, we find ourselves unable to connect and see how we are all connected. This is why the planet is in such a mess. There's so many people out there that are just so disconnected from nature. If we lose our connection with others, with humanity, it results in disconnection from parts of ourselves we get weaker immune systems. We can't work out who can be trusted. Now, working to survive instead of living to work does not serve. And it's our nature to create and get pleasure from what we do uh, that reflects who we are, that means something to us. So the, the third disconnect there is we need to be connected to something that serves, that we can create and get pleasure from, that reflects who we are. Getting cut off <coughs> from ourselves, from our truth, from our intuition, which is our inbuilt GPS to steer us onto the right path. When we get a powerful gut feeling and ignore it, something bad happens. So we need this, in, this connection to keep us real, to keep us safe. Um, and that is vital in life today. So we've really got to learn to reconnect to our truth, our intuition. So here's a, a short <laughs> inner guide to reconnect. Inside each one of us, we have our inner GPS. And this connects you to the most effective way to connect to your center. When we hold the intention to return to center, we can benefit in beautiful ways. This enables us to find and come in to our calm or to tune into our inner peace in a simple and effective manner, regardless of any circumstances. I'm gonna show you four different images. So take a moment to feel into which subject matter you feeling connected to. So if you just take a moment there to look at humanity. Just feel into what it feels like, see what's showing up inside you. Don't share it, just take a moment with that picture. 
and see how it makes you feel. And now tuning into nature. Now the cosmos or universal space. <laughs> and this one's solitude. It's possible that one or more have appealed to you. So what to do is remember which one stuck out to you and take a moment now to explore, have a think, make some notes um, if you'd like to, in which way you could maybe consciously connect to this. Okay in Good girl. daily lives because at any point when something shows up if you can somehow connect to one of those four pictures or, or something symbolic of maybe solitude maybe you can find solitude in a moment moment of busyness if you can tune in and find some solitude you'll find your peace maybe it's good for you to wait till night time and just to stare up at that huge universal space the stars the moons the planets and see that vastness that greatness of what is out there just to bring you into center. <laughs> Maybe humanity. Maybe you'd like to connect to others. Find some joy in connecting with others through some charity work or watching some videos or watching some true life stories, things like that. Finding a meme. Taking a screenshot and taking that picture so you can always connect to it whenever you feel the need. And nature, probably one of the more easier to connect to, even in a city, even in a flat, a block of high rise flats, you can maybe connect to seeing a tree outside or see the sun or watch the clouds or you know connect with the plant on a windowsill connect someone else's plant on a different windowsill watch out looking for the mountains or the hills connecting with the rocks in your pocket maybe you've got a pet rock all these ways in which you can just take a moment to then tune back in to nature, to pat your mama, <laughs> Mother Earth. <laughs> so we're going to move on now. And we're going to look at finding compassion for others. And sometimes that is really, really tough. It's quite a challenge because some people can really uh, challenge our 
inner nature, our kindness, our all who we are, all who we think we are, <coughs> and then think who we can be. But at the end of the day, there is one race, which is the human race. <coughs> Excuse me. You're my best girl. So there is one one race, the human race. You are. We <laughs> entered this life innocent and free. No child is ever born evil. So everyone began, you know, everyone was born into this life. No one was just plunked here. And no child is ever born evil. People become imbalanced because of what they experienced physically, chemically, environmentally and socially, as well as mentally. When any being experiences pain, suffering and trauma, they naturally try to protect themselves. Sometimes they cannot. Sometimes they cannot protect themselves. And this event then stays with them, often buried into the subconscious and affects their life and how they interact with others and their attachments from that moment on. It's simple enough to say, well, I experienced a trauma and therefore I deserve to be cut some slack here and understandably so, you know. But it's only right and fair that anyone who is still recovering from their experience, a traumatic experience that they had at any age, at any time in their life, whether they're conscious of it or not, that they should have just longer to adjust to changes and be supported so that they can feel safe and function too. What we have is no right, uh, what we have no right to do at all is compare traumas or claim one is more traumatic than another and therefore create some kind of hierarchy of trauma where one person has more or less right than the next. Fatty, come, Aki. Come on, come on up. Good boy. Yes. Not so well. So, where were we? So, we have no right to, you know, compare our traumas to someone else's or think just because ours appears more traumatic to us that they felt that it wasn't as traumatic to them because it all depends on. Our, what we're how resilient we are how much resistance we've got what we've ever experienced you know i would say that almost every human being alive has experienced trauma so some people go on to pass it on to the next generation like those who lived through war or those women who experienced rape and then had to raise the child that was the result of the rape um, or, or those who grew up witnessing Leo. domestic uh, abuse. All these times, it's where someone's experiencing a trauma and it, it continues to live with them and they have to live with pretty much daily um, reminders, if you like, uh, of these things. And it's, it's a, a tough, tough thing to go through. Just because a person experiences trauma doesn't mean they will pass it on, That, however. And if a person works on their trauma, a person can take their power back and the trauma stops there. Just because it hurt them does not stop that person doing it to others. Sometimes it's all they know. The child can end up mirroring their parents or the adult that hurt them or the experience the child can become worse than the original abuser. Role models matter. Safe space matters. Helping people see that just because an adult did it doesn't mean it's right or acceptable. Drama can cause a person to push people away and pull people closer. It can cause a person to be so mixed up and insecure 
that they do the most mindless, illogical and hurtful things to other human beings. <coughs> Coming from a place of loving awareness, we're in a more mindful state. We're better equipped to observe people who are still living life in a reactive way because they're still deeply affected by stress and their traumas. Remembering that these people are, whether they admit it or not, hurting. They're in pain, they're suffering. Because at some point their safety and security net did not work. They were left open to all manner of things at that time. These people are just like us. We are all the same. We are all show up in life differently. Our experiences have led us to make different choices. We know that the power we've got today by taking back 100% responsibility for thoughts, taking time to pause so we can respond instead of react. We look for truth and we drop the bullshit. We drop the belief systems that no longer serve us. But it's not always been this way. We're moving on to forgiveness now. We know how easy it is to make a mistake. We know how we're not perfect. And no matter what, that life goes on. Shit happens and we can only take responsibility for what we are responsible for. People often try to fix, change and rescue as a trauma response, which often means they take on responsibility for something they're not responsibility, uh, responsible for. We know that people often look to be saved because no one ever showed them how to save themselves. We know that people get cross and angry because they feel helpless and vulnerable and they do not know how to ask for help. We know that hurt people hurt people trying to save themselves and don't know what to do about it. <coughs> There's some really intense, severe, hurtful acts that do not seem to have logic to them. No amount of understanding <laughs> seems to get to the bottom of what or when or how or why. And it's then when we've got to remind ourselves that each person can only love from their level of consciousness. They're only capable of loving from the level of awareness on which they are present on. When we hold uh, and when we experience resistance, a friction, where we're holding ourselves or another person outside of our own heart, then it's time to find it in ourselves for forgiveness. <coughs> forgiveness doesn't mean that you're pardoning or excusing the other person's actions. Forgiveness doesn't mean you need to tell the other person that she or he is forgiven. Forgiveness doesn't mean you shouldn't have any more feelings of the situation. Forgiveness doesn't mean there is nothing further to work out in the relationship or that everything is okay now. Forgiveness doesn't mean you should forget that things ever happened. Forgiveness doesn't mean you have to continue to include the person in your life. And forgiveness isn't something you do for another person. By forgiving, you accept the reality of what happened. You find a way to live in a state of resolution with it. <coughs> this can be a gradual process. It doesn't necessarily have to include the person you are forgiving. Forgiveness isn't something you do for the person who wronged you. It's something you do for you. So forgiveness is something that you do for yourself and it can help you heal. Why is it so difficult, right? And there's several reasons. You're filled with thoughts of retribution <laughs> or revenge. You enjoy feeling superior. You don't know how to resolve the situation. You're addicted to adrenaline that anger provides. You identify as a victim or maybe you're afraid that by forgiving you have to reconnect or lose your connection with the other person. 
these um, reasons not to forgive can be resolved by becoming more familiar with yourself, with your thoughts, with your feelings and your boundaries and needs. Forgiveness requires willing to forgive. Sometimes you won't because the hurt went too deep or the person was too abusive or expressed no regret. Don't attempt to forgive anyone until you've felt that you've identified, fully felt, expressed and released your anger and pain around the situation. To forgive someone who you have resentment for and hold anger against you, you must find out why they did it and discover what is their truth. If possible, find understanding so that you can show compassion and move on to forgiveness. If it's not possible to find the truth in the situation, you can write a letter. I don't know if anyone's ever done that before, but you can write a letter to the person um, explaining how you feel and sending forgiveness. And also remember, if you don't forgive and come to terms with things in this lifetime, then if, if you're, you're like me uh, and Buddhists believe this too, you will get to do it all over again in the next life. So forgiveness is about letting go of what no longer serves us. It's not about forgetting. It's not about saying what happened was right. It's acknowledging the person or something that affected us did happen. And it's in that is an important part of our healing. Allowing yourself to sit and be with feelings connected to the wrongs, the imbalances, the situations. And instead of holding on and giving yourself friction, where it allows you allow it to hurt you when you're ready only when you're ready let it go forgiveness puts a final seal on what happened you will still remember what happened but you're no longer bound by it in the same way so now we're going to move on to the forgiveness ceremony and I've chosen to share the forgiveness ritual so we can release all things which have kept us from moving forward for so long and allow us to walk forward free from heavy baggage of our pasts. This may require more than one attempt as some things run deeper than others. So know that this is going to be, this is recording and you'll be able to come back in and run through it again and again and again okay so you're all able to access <laughs> it. and do what you need to do to be able to move on in these next stages of life moving on so during this fire ceremony i invite you to have your own fire if it's not possible, light a candle. And if you're unable to have your own fire, close your eyes and join me by mine. Now, I've got a very small... ...candle. It's still fire season, and I have no intention of setting fire to the area. You really don't need a giant fire to uh, to be able to do this practice. You just need a candle or to visualize the flame. A little bonfire inside of you. <coughs> We're now going to open sacred space. To the winds of the south, great serpent, wrap your coils of light around us. Teach us to shed the past the way that you shed your skin. To walk softly on the earth, 
teach us the beauty way. Aho. To the winds of the west, Mother Jaguar, protect our medicine space. Teach us the way of peace, to live impeccably. Show us the way beyond death. Aho. To the winds of the north, hummingbird, grandmothers and grandfathers, ancient ones. Come and warm your hands by our fires. Whisper to us in the wind, we honour you, those who have come before us, and you who will come after us, our children's children. Aho. To the winds of the east, great eagle, condor, come to us from the place of the rising sun. Keep us under your wing. Show us the mountains that we only dare to dream of. Teach us to fly wingtip to wingtip with the great spirit. Pachamama, we have gathered for the honouring of all your children, the stone people, the plant people, the four-legged, two-legged, the creepy crawlers, the, the fin, the furred and the winged ones, all our relations, our home. Father, Son, Papa, Inti, Mama, Kia, to the star nations. Great Spirit, you who are known by a thousand names and you who are the unnameable one, thank you for bringing us together and allowing us to sing this, the song of life. Aho. So I'm going to ask you just to take a moment to call upon your personal spirit guide to guide you. They will be with you by your side, keeping you safe throughout this experience. Now, I'd like you to identify the person or act you want to forgive. You don't need to share it. It just helps to in the forefront of your mind. If need be, you could write their name down on a piece of paper. We join. And number two, we're going to create space for forgiveness by visualizing the place it happened, the place there. <coughs> The incident happened. Or a safe space where you feel calm and protected. If that place was too much, you can always visualise your safe space where you feel calm and protected. As you stare now into the flame. Visualising the person standing in front of you by the fire. So you can look through the flame and see them. You will be reading from the charges against them like you were in a courtroom. You are calm, cool and focused. So I'm going to say a word, like a phrase. And I want you to say it in your head to the person who you're staring through the flames at. And I want you to fill in the gaps. So you say, I call upon you and then say their name. You are charged with, and now list all the things that they have done. Resisting, giving up. Cheating oh, no. and casting me out and refusing for that. Ask questions or listen to my pleas. 
And now say you failed to and tell them all what they have failed to do. You failed to maybe they failed to listen, to be present, to see you, to keep you safe, to hear you, to assist you, to support you, to keep their word. This caused, and now list the results of their actions. This caused. It caused me to use to use. And now name all the emotions and feelings that this has brought up for you. So I say and and now give yourself permission for the next two minutes to feel and experience the anger and pain rising inside your body as you continue to tell them the impact that it had i'm going to tell you when one minute is up and then I'll give you another after 30 seconds. So give yourself permission for the next two minutes to feel and experience the anger and pain inside you as you tell them the impact that it had. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds left. Now, if you take your stick, it's called a death arrow. So you match stick or your, your little stick and release all the pain by blowing it into or roaring it into the death arrow. 
So deep a breath as you can and just... And same fire. Watching. Watching your death hour then burn. Watching the flames transmute all that pain. And feel the heat of the fire cleansing your energy body so allow yourself to feel that heat and see that smoke and use that smoke to use it to cleanse and now we're going to turn that anger into appreciation by feeling what life lessons came through the experience that you you've been focusing on today what life lessons came through how have you grown how has it changed you how has it made you stronger or wiser or both how has it altered you? How, how, how is it that you now know, you know, what is it you now know that you're just never going to do something again because of that? How are you going to, maybe you're stronger, maybe you're more capable of protecting yourself. have a moment and feel into what life lessons have come from that experience take a moment to stare into the flame and know that hurt people often hurt people but what do you think that these people or this person must have experienced to make them behave as they did? Okay, feel free to write down how you've grown from it. And what was it that you think or feel that they've experienced? that's made them behave in such a way. And now, Imagine looking into the, that person's eyes, delve deep and discover their logic for a greater understanding. Even though this can be challenging, showing compassion can help bring you peace. Understand someone who has caused deep pain and suffering, like we talked about before, must have experienced an awful lot to be in such a place that causes other people to suffer. And remember that we were, we're all human beings at the end of the day. We're all human beings at the end of the day. And as human beings, we was all born with free will. We was all born free. We was all born peaceful and not at all evil. And life happened and life made us a certain way. So bringing this person to mind, we're going to, do a meta meditation. 
So we're now going to do a meta meditation. Knowing that people can only love and act from their level of consciousness, which can appear like rudeness. It can appear like hurtful and nasty and thoughtless and inconsiderate. And the truth is they just don't know any better. So bringing this person to mind, I want you to repeat after me. This person has a body and mind just like me. This person has a body and a mind just like me. This person has feelings, emotions and thoughts just like me. This person has feelings, emotions and thoughts just like me. This person has experienced physical and emotional pain and suffering just like me. This person has experienced physical and emotional pain and suffering just like me. This person has at some time been sad, disappointed, angry or hurt just like me. This person has at some time been sad, disappointed, angry or hurt just like me. This person has felt unworthy or inadequate just like me. This person has felt unworthy or inadequate just like me. This person worries and is frightened sometimes, just like me. This person worries and is frightened sometimes, just like me. This person will die, just like me. This person will die, just like me. This person has longed for friendship, just like me. This person has longed for friendship, just like me. This person is learning about life, just like me. This person is learning about life, just like me. This person wants to be caring and kind to others, just like me. This person wants to be caring and kind to others, just like me. This person wants to be content with what life has given them, just like me. This person wants to be content with what life has given them, just like me. This person wishes to be free from pain and suffering, just like me. This person wishes to be free from pain and suffering, just like me. This person wishes to be safe and healthy, just like me. This person wishes to be safe and healthy, just like me. This person wishes to be happy, just like me. This person wishes to be happy, just like me. This person wishes to be loved, just like me. This person wishes to be loved, just like me. And now, feel wishes for well-being arising inside you and say, I wish this person to have the strength, resources and social support that they need to navigate the difficulties in this life with ease. So I wish this person to have the strength, resources and social support that they need to navigate the difficulties in life with ease. I wish this person to be free from pain and suffering. I wish this person to be free from pain and suffering. I wish this person to be peaceful and happy. I wish this person to be peaceful and happy. I wish this person to be loved because this person is a fellow being just like me. I wish this person to be loved because this person is a fellow being 
just like me. And now finally, turning the act of forgiveness into love. Tell them that you forgive them. And allow them to walk towards you. And if you can, give them a hug. So just visualize yourself giving them a hug. If you maybe a hug is a bit much and you might be able to shake hands with them or place your hand on their shoulder. And now turn to ask your spirit guide, did I finally forgive them? So ask your spirit guide and say, did I finally forgive them? And wait to see what they say. If your guide says yes, excellent. And if your guide says no or doesn't answer, you repeat the process every day until your guide tells you they are finally forgiven. So if your guide says no or doesn't answer, you repeat the process every day until your guide says that they're finally forgiven. And now thank your spirit guide. I'm now going to close the circle. Thank you, Serpent, for helping us to shed what no longer serves us and help us to renew ourselves today. Thank you, Jaguar, for helping us to work fearlessly forward and come to face to face with the shadows of our past so that we can be courageous enough to forgive. Thank you, Hummingbird, for joining with me to connect to my lineage of the Lyca and the medicine of my ancestors, teaching me how to taste the nectar of life instead of the bitterness, to put right wrongs and to live with love. Thank you, Eagle and Condor, for helping me to soar above resentfulness and righteousness and connecting me with great spirit and a higher perspective. Thank you, Pachamama for your union with the Father, Papa Inti, to transmute the thoughts, the feelings and emotions through the elements of air and fire. <laughs>